Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, we'll learn the final coda section of Elfin Dance by Edvard Grieg. Let's come to the piano to get started. Let's listen to the coda section, which starts here at measure 53. Did you notice a new kind of music symbol in measure 59? Maybe you've never seen this before. What is this crazy X symbol? This is called a double sharp. Yes, that weird little X is a double sharp, and it means to go up an extra half step beyond just one sharp. So if you see a double sharp in front of the note C, sharp would take you here, a double sharp would take you all the way to D. Now the question that most students ask is, why not just write a D? Why do a C double sharp? Well, the reason is a little complicated and has a lot to do with music theory. But in a nutshell, Grieg already knew he wanted a D sharp as part of this five chord. Remember, we're in the key of E minor, which makes our five chord a B major chord if he's using harmonic minor, which he is here. So in harmonic minor, we have a D sharp already. And if we want to step just a half step below D sharp, it's custom in music theory to not use two of the same note. Like we wouldn't want a D and a D sharp if possible it's better to write it as a C double sharp so we see that stepping up motion on the staff. And so it's a little bit technical, but that's why we've got a C double sharp going to D sharp, going to F sharp to B. Now you notice the start of the coda is just the same as our A section. It's all identical up to that point. The change and the special new coda section begins here in measure 57. Left hand's gonna jump down. And I like to think in block chords to learn new notes more quickly. Just think of all of these. It's really an A minor chord with this extra little half step below to make it sound really interesting. See, Greek was thinking about just this A minor triad, but using that G sharp to spice it up a little bit. Now you try. Now let's look at the next measure. Again, learn, if you have these patterns, you wanna learn them more quickly, think of it as a block chord. Notice the left hand's playing this, the right hand, if I just took all those notes and mushed them together, it makes an F major triad, again, with this half step below to add a little spice. Just play this as a block chord with fingers one, two, three, five, and then play it the way it's actually written. If your fingers just know where to go from feeling that block chord, it makes that really easy to play. Now you try. And then in the next measure, the left hand plays a B, F sharp, A. Again, this is gonna be our five, seven chord with this C double sharp. So the right hand block chord is gonna be like this. We've got this B major first inversion chord with that C double sharp in there. So play that just as a block once and then and let your wrist float up on that last staccato. Now you try. And putting all that together. Doesn't that sound cool? Pause if you'd like to work on that on your own for a bit. Otherwise, let's keep going to this next section. Now we're marked pianissimo. So as soft as you can possibly play. Now, for some smaller hands, this left hand chord may be too big. That's fine. If you just leave out this top note, it's gonna sound almost the same. 
That's what I want you to do for smaller hands. If your hands can play this comfortably, I don't want you like killing yourself to play this. It's not worth it, okay? This top note, we can do without. Your ears will barely even notice it. You can do it that way. Just play the two bottom notes, leave off the top note. Otherwise, you can play it like this. Notice that middle note is moving around a little bit. One, two, moves down, back up. One, two, moves up and back down. Pause to work on that left hand part on your own, then press play. Now let's check out the right hand chords. Also, the middle note is the one that's moving. These outer two notes just stay the same, but Grieg is having the fun with this middle note. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Notice how that moved around a little bit there. Then hands together, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Notice the middle notes are moving opposite from each other. See that pattern? I'm just gonna play the middle notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. See, they're kind of going in contrary motion to make a really interesting sound. Now pause to work on that section, right hand alone, then try it hands together, then press play to go on. Now let's check out the last two measures. Little miniature notes like this are called grace notes. And so these two notes, the B to the D sharp, which again, we pull that D sharp from E harmonic minor. Grieg is using harmonic minor here. They're going to play really quickly. And to get the sound of this, I recommend, let's just start with these three notes, these upper three notes in this pattern, the B to D sharp to E, and just play it as a block for right now. Can you do that? Just try this with me a few times and get that feel in your fingers. And then just think of turning your hand a little bit and just play them as fast as you can. But I still want to hear each note distinctly. Don't, don't make it a mush. Try to play it really clean, but lightning fast. Can you do that? Try it a few times until you feel happy with your sound. Try to make it crisp and zippy. And again, if you're not getting it, play it all as a block because your fingers need to be in that shape and then you just kind of roll through it with a little flick of your wrist, a turn of the wrist. And then we're gonna add in that bottom note. So your thumb is gonna help now on that last note. Maybe do it slowly once or twice and then play them all as a block and then try and let your hand just rip through it. It may take a while to get the feel of that. Try it a few times and keep working it. And then the very last measure, we just come up an octave and do it again. And then the hardest part is this is triple piano, pianissimo. So it's gotta be really gentle. Pause to work on that for a little bit, then press play to go on. Now, don't forget to observe rests whenever you come across them. So this ending, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, rest, 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 rest. Now, in your own practicing this week, once again, don't forget to use metronome. One and two and three and 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 one, two, three. Once you can do that, no pauses, no missed notes, you'll gradually speed that up. Great job learning the coda of Elfin Dance today. Thanks as always for watching and learning with me and happy practicing. Huh, I can't find my favorite purple pen anywhere. Have you seen it? Ah, missing purple pen? Sounds like a case for... Agent Double Sharp! Come on, Scuba. 
I want to find my pen. It's not time to be silly. What? I'm not Scuba. I'm Agent Double Sharp. I know it's you, Scuba. No, you don't. You can't recognize me because I'm wearing a mask. You always wear that mask. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Agent Double Sharp is on the case. He's smart. He's fast. He's brave. But double. Activate double speed. Da da da. Pshh.